certainly can't trust the consulate. Flatterers are drifting excrement. That's not right. If the plague exists, do you know how many governments would want it? Clerical profiteers are not there. And what they do to so get it. So discord there? No. A biological weapon. Letters. He has assigned a letter to each sin and then changed their order. He's made nanogram. And that was a clip from Inferno, the latest film in the Robert Langdon series based on the Dan Brown novels of the same for his take on this. A look at other week's new movies. Let's bring in Richard Krauss, our film critic. Okay, let's start with Inferno. Mm -hmm. How does this compare to the other movies in the series? Well, uh, there's the one main thing that connects them all, and that's Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. So you've got The Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and now Inferno. Uh, these movies have made a fortune. This movie has already made, Inferno's already made $100 million overseas. So wow. th it's a hit, no matter what happens here in North America. The thing that they have in common is the Robert Langdon character. That's Tom Hanks as the Harvard symbiologist and, and professor. And the thing that drives me crazy about these movies is Tom Hanks in it. Really? He's a charmer. We love him. He's having an amazing year with Sully. Knocked it out of the park on Saturday Night Live last week. Uh, in these movies, though, he's Mr. Exposition. He's the guy that has to explain every single thing that happens. So here they're trying to find a virus that could potentially kill about half the people on the planet. Uh, but for some reason, the evil genius that created it has left all the clues uh, and worked them all into paintings of Hieronymus Bosch or, or uh, poems by Dante, Dante's Inferno. And so every time you go somewhere he says well this painting was painted in 1870 and this poem was you know, and it goes on and on and on I felt like I was sitting in history class for most of this movie so it's two out of five stars for me because there's thriller aspects there and the joke would be you know this movie doesn't have a clue well it does it's got tons of clues it just doesn't have any thrills okay so let's move on we want to talk about moonlight yeah I think you like this this one. I do. So it, let's start with the actors in it. We know the uh, Mahershala Ali. Yeah. Well, if you if you know House of Cards, Remington. you know him. Yeah. He's yeah, uh, and he's a, a smallish character here. You've got a really interesting movie here that's broken into three segments. You've got uh, the main character, uh, who is a young man uh, by the name of Chiron. He's 10 years old when we first meet him. He's bullied in school. He's got a troubled home life. And he meets a mentor, played by Ali, uh, who uh, really helps him get through this very difficult time that he's having. Now, unfortunately, Ali is also his mother's drug dealer. So there's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a, a push and pull here, but fantastic performances all around. So then in the second part, uh, the main character is about 17 years old, still getting bullied, but he's coming to grips with the idea that he is living in Florida, he's African-American, and gay and and he's having trouble uh, finding his place in the world then there's part three I won't tell you what happens in part three because it connects the first two parts this is a fantastic movie this is one of the best movies of the year it's beautifully written uh, you've got really lovely performances from all three of the young men who play the main character Ali is fantastic in this uh, Naomi Harris who plays the mother and we've seen her in everything from small art house movies to uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean's movie she's been around for a long time she's fantastic in this this is a winner all round and I think if we're uh, studying the Oscar potential of movies right now this is one you should see how many stars a four out of five Okay, wow. So that is one to keep on our list. Now, yeah, yeah. Uh, another one that got a lot of talk about at TIFF, uh, The Handmaiden. Yeah, The Handmaiden, uh, people, this is not The Handmaiden's Tale. That's what everyone thought. It's not that. It's a much different story. Set in 1930s Korea, The Handmaiden is all about uh, madness, con games, double crosses, double double crosses, kinky sex, desire, all sorts of things. It's two and a half hours long. And every single twist and turn here confounds your expectations. Just when you think you've got this movie figured out, it flips it on its head for you. Don't take the kids. Don't go with your parents because it's a very erotic movie and there are things in here that you probably don't want to watch with your mom or dad. Uh, Do you while think you're it will there. work, though, for a mainstream audience? I, I, I don't know that it's, a re that it's a mainstream film, but it's a really interesting film. And if you're tired of uh, big superhero movies or if you say, oh, there's never anything for me, I want something interesting and different at the movie theaters, go see The Handmaiden because you've certainly probably never seen anything quite like it. And how many stars? I'm giving that one four to five. All right. Film critic Richard Krauss, thanks for this. Thank you. Thank you.